Well, hello, hello. My name is Gant and welcome to Lucid 9. I think you might be wondering like, Gant, why aren't you playing the show? The show Ralphie's Academy? And I'm like, um, I don't know, man. Um, I want to do something new. I put like the show route like in one long video because it's not really that long like the other routes. But I just want to try something new and do something new that's not Pixel Fade, you know? Because the only other game I did that's not Pixel Fade is, you know, Caffeine. And I want to do Persona 4, but... Yeah. Hopefully, like, um, I put a picture right here that says, like, what's happening with Persona 4, but... If I don't put it there, then it's like... Eh, I'll tell you right now. Um, I got, like, these copy strike warnings, and it's, like, because of the animation shit for the the game i want to keep continue playing it but i honestly if i do get big i do not want to get copy strike copyright strike i don't know man maybe i'll think about playing it again anyway here we are so let us play i know nothing about this game like let me tell you it's been sitting in my library for like since i was in high school i think it's either senior year or junior year so like either fucking four or five years ago oh wow i'm old all right let's start the game i step back and examine my masterpiece hmm perfect my favorite color uh okay i don't know how to do this like should i sound like a crazy guy like my favorite color <laughs> i've always loved red it's different brilliant vibrant unusual a happy an anomality just like me red isn't much for nature really only shows up in autumn and even then it's a dreary rust or nauseating cherry and we just can't have that not when it deserves so, so, so much more. A whispering breeze filters through my thoughts, brushing against my skin with icy fingers. I allow myself a pause, a moment to pause, to well relish, to admire, to welcome the fresh scent of freedom. This is what I live for. When I open my eyes, I spot a I spot a frail leaf dancing upon the backbone of the passing wind, afflicting the world when it pulls, <laughs> when it, when a appealing shade of asparagus, I pluck it from its branch with the edges from from my stained fingernails. Disgusting! How could anyone could enjoy this color? Eludes me. A soft groan redirects my attention to my waiting masterpiece. It's lovely, really. Spread across the floor, face contorted with fear, twitching, cold fingers clutching at air. Not my best work, unfortunately. The canvas died much quicker than I have originally ex expected, even when I tried to carve a bit slower. Well, no matter. Today, it shall be a palette for my paint. I make quick work of my new palette's chest, ignoring the twitching of post-mortem... Post-mortem... Fuck. Post-mortem post reflexes from its mutilated kneecaps. The sweet color of red, true crimson, pure scarlet, slink down its pallid abdomen. Licking at the blossoming turf below. I dip my fingers in the setting pool of blood. It's warm, sticky, like syrup or setting gelatin. The sweet scent waves to my nostrils. Ah, it smells of iron, of rust, of all things sharp and beautiful. Now... A new canvas. <laughs> what the fuck? I have no idea what this game is. I just been doing this fucking voice for so long. 
Ooh. <laughs> I check my surroundings, evaluating the surface and texture and sizes and shapes of every object in sight. None are quite so satisfying as human skin with its elasticity, its porous absorption, its innatively warm tint, but a substitute is required, so a substitute I must find. Presently, I realize that I'm still holding the sore eye of a leaf in my hand. Oh, fucking. Presently, I realize that I'm still holding that eyesore of a leaf in my hand. Well, I suppose it will have to do. In one bold fluid stroke, I swept my paint across the leaf, the very essence of Van Gogh himself. Ah oh, yes, dear Van Gogh, the man cut off his own ear to send a message when words didn't just didn't suffice. I've always admired her style. I take a moment to appreciate the leaf's newfounded radiance before searching for a proper display. Something like this deserves to be exhibited. I hang my canvas back on its branch. That's better. If only there was more of this color in the world. The unexpected interlude of my phone drives me out of my thoughts. The only the irritating thing just loves to ruin the climax. Yes. <clears throat> it is done. You're always such in a rush. Well, yes, yes, it's done. I was having a moment. There's more where that came from. You interrupted me. How do I? Okay, let me do this voice like in a deep, like, <clears throat> cool, deep voice. You're the one who wanted to know when it was finished. A thrill leaps through my veins as my lips pull into a tremendous smile. Well, is it? Same time, same place as usual. You know the drill. I nearly clap my hands but master myself for one final word. Understood. I cut the transmission. Oh, fuck, I, I gotta get back into that voice. Ah, water. I cut the transmission and eagerly withdraw a small bottle from within my jacket. Only one pill left, but no matter, I'll be getting more soon enough. I pop the final capsule into my mouth puncturing in its skin with my teeth and rolling better gel over my tongue. Now this, this is life. As a wave of euphoria sweeps through me, I turn my, I turn from my handiwork, strolling out of the meadow. Today's fun is over, but tomorrow would hold just as many pleasures. <coughs> Fuck. <coughs> <laughs> My fucking voice hurts. Okay, All right, let me take a sip of water because I'm gonna do like this voice. Ma, your ma Ishimoto. Huh? I shug, I slugly pull my head upwards, fixing my eyes on the woman at the front of the classroom. Are you even listening? I had an instinctive smirk. Technically, no. I was always, I've always found more, fuck. I've always found napping more appealing than relearning history that's been drilled into me since the age of six. Not that I can actually say that. In all honesty, this teacher doesn't deserve that kind of cautious response, callous response. Uh, yes, ma'am. Perfect. Summarize the whole section we've been reviewing. I glance at the touchscreen board mounted behind the teacher, quickly skimming over the graphics and typogra <laughs> typography hovering on its surface. History of Ishamu, our glorious metropolis, beginning 2000, 2000 AD. Heh, <laughs> easy. 
Life was really boring for a while. We were in debt. Weren't... Fuck. Well, life was really boring for a while. We were in debt. We're not war. And we're basically doing nothing interesting. The teacher's lips purse into a thin line as the classroom erupts into snickers. I feel the slightest tinge of regret and rain in my sarcasm. Then in 2007, America entered a debt crisis that caused a wide world financial crash. Japan was one of the countries most affected by this. Well, second to China. And why might that be? Because we were dumb about who we partner with. She taps her fingers impatiently on her desk, her eyes narrowing into slits. Well, she asked me to summarize the chapter. She didn't ask me how. Anyway, our glorious government didn't handle the situation so hot, so we had to lovely depre- So we had a lovely depression with all-time high on unemployment and crime. Good effort, good effort, gold star. The teacher waves her hand at the classroom's roar with la- as a- <laughs> fuck. If you're new to my channel and, you know, you kinda care about the Lucid 9 series, just know, I can't read for shit. <laughs> water. The teacher waves her hands as the class roars with laughter. Right, right, that's enough. I'll be needing to talk with you after class about your attitude, young man. Meh. Other news. In other news, grass is green. Elizabeth, perhaps you can, you can salvage this explanation. She gestures a few seats to my right where my lavender hair classmate sits her spine as straight as a ruler. I feel a curl of distance in the pin of my stomach as I lounge against my chair. Of course, Elizabeth Osh Oshiro, class valedictorian, school's poster child, and the area's golden girl. Nap time. I settle my head in my hands as Elizabeth leaps to her feet, smiling warmly. <clears throat> yeah, how long can do her voice? Certainly, during this time, Japan fell into crisis. Public demonstrations, often violence, occurred almost every day. Furthermore, political scandals regarding the national government kept spreading. Dude, I'm actually like clasping my hands together and like putting it to my chest, like, ah, the golden child. Me. <laughs> The teacher relaxes as Elizabeth's textbook re recitation. She even shoots a quick glare in my direction, as if to say, See? Why can't you be like Elizabeth? <clears throat> Eventually, local poli politic <laughs> fuck. Eventually, local political power became more efficient than the central administration. Hence why Isamu operates as smoothly as it does. Yes, thanks to the gover the mayor's effort. Perfectly done, Elizabeth. Elizabeth smiles proudly and settles back into her chair, fixing her eyes on me with challenging disapproval. Alan shrugged my shoulders, sending her an easy smirk. Is this a guy or girl? Ooh, beautiful and brainy. She might be worth enough to make my list. Okay. <laughs> I'm the typical asshole, because I got my fingers pointing at myself. Look at me, thumbs up to me. <laughs> I glance to my left, just in time to catch another classmate, Yahiko I Ikari, winking conspicuous, conspicuously at Elizabeth. She, she clearly igno ignores him. Well, that's Yahiko. Fuck, I gotta get his name right. Yahiko. Y Yahiko? Yahiko. For you. I can't remember a day when he hasn't tried to flirt with some girl or another, nor can I remember a day where he wasn't flat out rejected. Technically, he's my former roommate, which makes him my friend of two years. How close of a friend? Well, that's up for debate. <laughs> huh? He managed to deflect my charms. I wonder how. Me too! Like, what the fuck? <laughs> no one can resist the 
no one can resist the yeah the Yahiko Ikari. Yahiko. Yahiko claps his mouth shut at the teacher's strict command, strident command. She leans heavily against her desk, massaging her temple with her fingers. All right, class. Thanks to Elizabeth, we see where we come from. I'm sure you're all wondering at the what the point of this history recap was. Not really, no. We must study the past to understand the future. As such, it's imperative that the next topics be taken seriously. So, where do you all see yourself 10 years from now? I'm barely able to sniffle a snort. It's only, what, the second day of school? Sure, this is a third year class, so we're preparing for college entering exams. Does that mean that we have to know exactly what we want to do for the rest of our lives? Um, not really, no, because, shit, I still don't know what to do. Don't get me wrong, I'm trying to learn to get into IT, but at the same time it's like, I want to do YouTube, you know, because I have fun making these videos and doing crazy voices like this, you know? <laughs> yeah, fuck, man. I love doing those voices, and hopefully, you know, I could get paid one of these days for this. But if not, I'm just learning IT. want to get more into computers, because I don't know shit. <laughs> but it's okay if you don't know where you're going. Like, I'm 21, and I'm starting to get my life together. Like, it's okay to be lost and confused right after high school because you know it's all different you know and it doesn't matter if you're the straight-a student or the guy who barely passed it doesn't matter as long after you get that diploma you are plunged into the thing we call life not knowing which direction to take not knowing where to go so you just have to take time and you know figure out what you want to do it's easy to say that, like, it's easier to do it when you're in high school, but at the same time, it's like, you don't know what the real world is. But, just remember this, the first thing you gotta do, you get a job, part-time job, any job, even if it's crappy, you just need one job. So you could, like, you know, finance what you wanna do, either if it's college, you wanna start a YouTube channel, or you wanna start a business or something. You need to get that moolah, so you gotta be hustling, man. Just remember that. If you don't know what to do, just get a part-time job. Then after that, you just figure out where you want to lead your life, you know? Anyway, um, let us continue. Because if you haven't, you know what I mean? If you're new to my channel because of Lucid9, just remember this. I ramble a lot when it's like heavy subjects like this or even stupid ones. So, yeah. Okay, let us continue. The teacher pointedly looks at me, a hard glint in her eye. Yamada Ishimoto, perhaps you would like to get us started? I'm tempted to say, no thank you, but that would be pretty rude. I'll manage my parents' restaurant, I guess. The teacher's lips tighten ever so slightly. I know what she's thinking. No passion, no ambitions. He'll be a failure, this one. He'll pay the bills. What more can I ask for? Well, yeah, I'll pay the bills. Like, <laughs> it's better than being a fucking teacher. <clears throat> really, dude? Out of everything you could pick, you pick a restaurant manager? Well, what would you suggest? <laughs> Add a bunch more, dude, like women and cars. And he criticized me for a lack of imagination. Come on, it's 10 years. Anything can happen. The teacher shoots him a, disappro a disapproving glare as his voice raises dramatically in volume. Ah, uh, ah, uh, Yahiko, thank you for volunteering. Where do you see yourself in the <clears throat> Where do you see yourself in the next ten years? Yahiko beams, and I feel a sudden sense of dread. Here goes his dream, the one that I've heard no less than a two hundred times before. <clears throat> well, teach, I see myself with a Ferrari F five hundred under one arm, a Lamborghini. <laughs> Aventador 704 under the other and a lot of beautiful girls in between fighting for the honorable privilege of bearing my children the class stares at him ah uh, heck let's have some fun I whisper to him what about the mansion ah uh, <laughs> uh, 
fuck. <laughs> it's just his voice. Like the teacher can do it, but his voice. I'm gonna fucking die doing it. <laughs> right. Take all of that and put it in front of a 200 square foot mansion, attended by a staff of 100 maids. And and where is it located? Ooh, it is in the Caribbean, on an island. A, ma <laughs> a man-made island, specifically constructed just for me, with my name lasered engraved in the hills, so that every plane ki fly <laughs> that flies by sees that it belongs to. That's quite enough, Yahiko. Thank you for your um input. Clearly, she doesn't believe in his dream. Actually, I don't think anyone except Yahiko believes in his dream. Then again, Yahiko has enough belief to make up. Make up for everyone else. No, <laughs> no, Umiko. What about you? As the rest of our classmates drone on on about joining some kind of mega corporation like Lamiske or Way for Pharmaceutical, I lean closer to Yahiko. You forgot something. I did. <laughs> How do I want to do the voice? <laughs> I did. The ya. The walk-in closet just for designer shoes, the private jet, a second mansion in Tahiti. Oh, crap! I did! Hey, hey, teach! Fortunately for the teacher, the school bell rings before he can grab her attention. My classmates immediately shove their belongings into their bags and bolt for the door. Meanwhile, Yahiko <laughs> heads straight for the teacher's desk. His eyes light with excitement as he Gabbers on and on about his yacht and his designer shoes and his private jet and his second mansion in Tahiti. <clears throat> a restaurant manager? Uh, <laughs> and then there's Elizabeth, slipping into Yahiko's now vacant seat. She shifts her backpack weight to the desk and raises a patronizing eyebrow at me. Well, sorry for being realistic, Miss CEO of a mega corporation. Sorry that I actually have ambitions, Mr. Manager of the Family Restaurant. What? Should I have talked about having a mansion and cars and maids on my own personal island? You didn't even shoot for a restaurant not owned by your parents. Uh, they'll kick the bucket one day. I might as well be the one who takes over. Have some respect, would you? I sneaker at that. Respect? Me? I flash her a bright, over-friendly smile. See you later, Lizzie. She fumes, but forces herself to take a deep breath until her expression stills. Unfortunately. Hmm. That was pretty nice. That was a pretty nice comeback. I'll give her that much. Uh, guy or girl? Um, I I'll go with girl with this one. Beth, so for lunch? Okay. <clears throat> so, since you look super, super cute, I'm gonna just, like, uh, go with, like, an annoyingly high-pitched voice. Let us see if I can do it. Because this is gonna hurt my fucking throat. <laughs> if I ever do make that show, um, video, my voice will be like, So, guys, you know what I mean? Like, out of breath? Okay. A student slides through the door with a warm smile and a waves. I recognize her as a girl who's always with Elizabeth. Don't know much else about her. In a blink of an eye, Elizabeth's face softens into a friendly smile, friendly grin. I'll be right there. Yup, just in case it wasn't clear enough, her hate is directed exclusively at me. She's the queen of angels to everyone else. Particularly this girl. Who I guess is the closest thing, thing she has to a friend. Well, Ishimoto, it's been a pleasure. I bet it has. Fuck, I didn't even get to do that super high-pitched voice for the girl. He lifts her chin and swiftly walks out of the room, nearly bumping into a startled Yahiko on the way out. As a train of second years, probably her groupies, pull her away, Yahiko slips next to me. Why did she talk to you? Not me? The great Yahiko Ikari? 
Dude, is he gonna do that every time? The great Yahiko Ayakari. <laughs> I still don't know what kind of voice I'm gonna do for him. Like, I wanna do like, <laughs> asshole voice. <laughs> but I can't really do like a good asshole voice. <clears throat> or what do I do for that one guy from fucking Caffeine? How dare you? No. Or should I just give him like a polish like, oh, my boy. I am high class. Oh, I'm gonna do that. High class. <laughs> Maybe because there's a limit to how many brain cells he's willing to sacrifice for conversation? Beats me. He's been doing that for a while. Really? Were you in the same class last year? Oh. We were in the same class last year. Really? I'm not surprised that he just learned about this. Then again, to be fair, I don't talk to Yahiko much about my personal life. Yeah, something like that. It's not important. Yahiko evaluates me for a second with a usual stonic expression, but quickly shakes it off, his face melting into a grin. <clears throat> so, what were you what were you thinking about my dream earlier? This again? On second thought, maybe we shouldn't keep maybe we should have kept talking about Elizabeth. Same as the other two hundred times you've told me. It hasn't been 200. It, has it really? Has it really? <clears throat> has it really? 203 to be exact. Huh? So, that means you think it's amazing, right? Totally. I think it's the best dream in history. And so original and realistic. Thanks, dude. But, I don't think you're aiming high enough. Huh? What should I add? Aim for the moon. He gasps as if that's the best idea ever. The poor soul. Forget Tahiti, a mansion on the moon. You'll be the first and probably the last. Just think of the possibilities. No one ever set foot on the moon. Imagine how famous I'll be if I had a mansion there. No one's ever set foot? Seriously? Fuck, guy or girl? Guy or girl? Okay, I'm gonna do girl, but very, very loud. Either I stepped into the conversation at the wrong time, or someone just came up with a really stupid idea. Please tell me, sir. I'm gonna do super high pitch for her, and this dude, like, fuck, he looks like Kirishima from My Hero Academia. Fuck, I can't do, um,. Kirishima's voice actor, so I'll just give him like a, um, like, what up, bruh? You know what I mean? Like a, like, stoner or a surfer dude. Enter Rui Hay Hayata, my friend of 10 years. Technically, she's a grade lower than me, but that doesn't stop us from hanging out. She stuck with me through thick, thick and thin. She probably knows me better than I know myself. Besides her, Masato Kiyogani. Kirogani. Hardy in both build and personality. If I had to describe him in one word, I'll just fire. Easily antagonized, hard to put out, and blazes every obstacle out of his way. Fuck, you gave me that, and I'm like, I want to give him like a afternoon, little daisies. What's going on here? I'm gonna build a vacation home on the moon. Somehow, I can't say I'm surprised. I know, right? I'm brilliant. Think, the first man on the moon. I'm the first man to build a mansion on it. You're so bright, you're blinding me. <clears throat> what have you been telling him? That a great leap for him is a small step for mankind. He has to think about that for a moment, but I'm rewarded with a smirk. Clever! I know. Look, if you guys are done yapping, Yama and I gonna, Yama and I are gonna hit the track. What? I don't think Yama was joining again this year. Tch, of course he is. Um, this is news to me. It doesn't sound like it's a good idea. 
considering he's only went to one practice last year and did the rest. Well, he ain't ditching this year. Ain't that right, man? Um, well, now that you mention it... What's that? You guys didn't even win last year. Masato, no need to make a big deal. Masato's eyes flare with the instinctive need to prove the worthiness of track. We're winning this year. I got a secret weapon. Really? Masato lights up at Rui's apparent interest. See, the, we lost last year because we didn't have a good name. This year, I've got a great one. He pauses for dramatic effect. Marvelous Masa. <laughs> Marvelous Masa. Masa. No, Mesa. I have to get a table for some reason. Mesa. Mesa. Sa da 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 da. Mesa. I think it's Mesa. I don't remember. Uh, uh, well, at le at the very least, this is pretty good opportunity to joke around. Wow, that's fantastic. And I called myself Speed of Light, Mountain Destroyer. The hell? You should rename yourself to Stricken Shadow. <laughs> Stricken Shadow. Dark Dark Eradicator. Then we'll be unstoppable. Ain't no way I'm going with that. Yeah, he's in great with sarcasm. I smirk at him, but before I can elaborate, the PA above us crackles to life. The club <laughs> The Club Fairies officially opened the courtyard. Feel free to drop by and check out some of what your fellow students have planned. Already at just the second day. Maybe the school just makes everything happen faster this year. I don't even see really see why. Asamu Imperial Boarding Academy has always done well for itself, even though the recession even throughout the recession. There's no need to change things now. <laughs> Fuck, what was his voice? Hey, it's club time. Let's go take a look. No thanks. I'd rather not be blacklisted. What does that mean? It means that she afraid she's afraid to go go with you. You'll outshine her so much that the clubs won't be interested in her. Ooh. Rui glares at me. I only wink back. Well, you shouldn't worry about that, my dear Rory. I'm sure I could use my <laughs> substantial spear of influence to get you a good spot. I'm already in a club, you know? Drama club? Oh, right. He's been in drama club since last year, and somehow he's still forget he's still forgotten? He's still forgotten. Then, what was Yama talking about? Nothing. Just acting like a idiot. Like, nothing. Just acting like an idiot as usual. Well, you know what they say. Like, like attracts like. Rui elbows me sharply in the rib, but her lips are pulling up at the corners. She's smiling. They also say opposite, opposite track. Yeah, and we know which one you are. She slaps me playfully on the arm, and Masato and Yahiko watches with blank stares. D did I just miss something? No more than you usually do. Yahiko frowns for a moment, but eventually shrugs at the ex shrugs the exchange off. Well, I don't know what you guys are talking. I don't know about you guys, but I need to find myself a club to grace my Im amendable talents. They're amendable, alright. I can't read for shit, okay? Deal with it. So, without further ado, I bid thee farewell. He turns with a flourish of his hand, but Rui calls out after him. You know that we'll be there, right? Huh? Club recruitment day, all the clubs will be there, including track and trauma and drama. Oh. Well, see you there. 
he whis he whisks out of the room. You're coming to the track booth, yeah? Me? Like I'm track's poster child? In fact, I'd probably just scare away potential recruits. Don't think like that. You can be a great asset, man. You just gotta believe. Okay, this guy's gonna kill my voice. What the fuck? <laughs> Mm. AKA every movie theme ever with King Snickers, but M Masato grabs my arm. Really, man, you're coming? Surprised by his sudden intensity, I com I contemplate it for a moment. It doesn't take long. Sure, why not? Really? Not like I have anything else to do. Masato grins, releasing my arm. Good, I gotta go set up, but I'm expecting you there. He dashes out of the room after quickly waves after a quick wave to Ruri. She smiles back and promptly turns to me. Have you figured out why he wants you in track so badly? Not a clue. She hesitates for a moment and glances around the room. You know, you could join drama club instead. It could be a valid excuse for Masato. I think he'll just ask why I joined a different club when I could have joined track. But still, I think he would really like it. Honestly, it sounds like it could be pretty fun. Reese seems to enjoy it. He often claims that it's just like when we played make believe as kids. And make believe is one of the few things I didn't mind doing. But it's so much work. It's no more work than track, idiot! Besides, it could be really fun! I'll take your word for it. She rolls her eyes and shoulders of her bag. Well, fine, Mr. Grumpy Pants. Some of us have club booths to manage, so I'm gonna get going. I'll go with you. We walk in... We walk in step to the door, almost into freedom, and then the strident voice of the teacher rips through the air. Ahem! Yama Ishimiro! Surely you didn't expect to escape so easily! Ah uh, yes, my attitude problems. I turn to Ruri, suddenly pleading. Bail me out? Not a chance! What? What? It builds character! I have plenty of character. Come on, throw up a distraction for me. I throw in a shameless dose of puppy dog eyes. She only pokes my forehead, sticking her tongue out. You win some, you lose some. Just be glad it's with a teacher instead of the police. She darts off as I can falterly. <laughs> she darts off as I call her falterly after her. <clears throat> but at least the police wouldn't bore me into tears. What was that, young man? I turned to find the teacher hovering right behind me. Whoops. Uh, nothing. Great weather we're having, huh? She doesn't seem amused. At this point. At what point? It's the second day of school, unless he's referring to teaching me last year. Come to think of it, yeah, that's highly possible. It's clear that detention is doing nothing for your toxic behavior. When has detention ever done anything for toxic behavior? Like, come on. Detention is just, you know what I mean? It's just basically like, you stay here for 30 minutes or an hour. How does that feel, huh? It's like, fuck you, asking now I'm gonna go do my own shit. Go play video games and then go smoke weed or fuck off. You know what I mean? It's like, shit, detention doesn't do shit. Well, yeah, because I, na I can nap in detention. Therefore, I've taken the liberty of recommending you for therapeutic mentorship, which will be will take place on campus at the description of our dorm manager. Requirements will be one hour, five days a week. The mentor will need to sign off on every visit. The what now? Are you scheduling brainwashing sessions for me? Excuse me, you might have other ideas, young man. But civility and respect are integrated cornerstones of our modern society. Civility and respect? Dude, these 
day and, day and age, there's no such thing as civil civil or respect. Like people don't respect shit, man. I work at Yogurt Land, and it's like people are fucking assholes, like more times than than not. And the people, and the only reason I'm working there is because like when you get like those good customers that like treat you with respect, it's like, oh my god, you know what I mean? But people are fucking rude. Respect. <laughs> <laughs> Come to East Lowe's, learn, learn something about respect, you know? <laughs> Only a Mexican mom will teach you about respect. Oh, oh, you want to respect? Oh, you're not going to respect me? La chancla. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> if it doesn't result in scrubbing away some of that ignorant of your, ignorance of yours, then I say good riddance. I'm shocked by this unusual passion outburst from her. She slows her breath. Shaking as he jabs a book and envelops at me. Oh, fuck. She, she slows her breath, shaking and jabs a book and envelope at me. Take this, miss. Take this, Mr. Ryoto's office. You know where it is. A tiny pinch of tension releases. Mr. Ryoto, the mentor? Maybe this won't be so bad. I give the book a once over. The cover is sober. So somber. And 100% boring. Black letters proclaim primitive primates of the 21st century. 100 plus correctional techniques to improve the mindset of any undeveloped adolescence. Really? I bet you there's a book called this too. It's like, what the fuck? Well, geez, I'm honored. Take it? I take it. Goodbye, Yama Ishimoto. She flounces, she flounces out of the classroom, clearly fed up with my shenanigans. Alright. Wordlessly, I take, I turn and head down the corridor. Okay, I'm... <coughs> oh, fuck. Okay. Guess someone's a little touchy. Not that I blame her. If I was a student like, if I was a student like me, I'd hate him too. Okay, well, I am gonna end it here. But yeah, we know nothing about the story. Why are you ending it so right here? Because I normally end it after, after you know, like 40 minutes. It's a good place to end it. And we'll get to see Mr. Ryoto next, next video, you know? And, okay, you know the drill. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell notification to see whenever I post a new video. And comment down below. Tell me how you feel about this game. Are you feeling it? Are you not feeling it? Maybe you're like, yeah, we want Ace Academy. We just want Pixel Fate. And it's like, you're going to get it. You're going to get that show, that um show route. But I'm going to put that in one video because, you know, fuck it. And also, <laughs> uh, but tell me how you feel about this game, man. Because uh, I want to try something new, and this shit has been sitting in my library for so long. I know nothing about this. I didn't even play it. So, yeah. Well, this is Gat signing out. And as always, no, this is Gat saying farewell. <laughs> farewell. That's my outro. This is Gat saying farewell. And as always, bye-bye.